Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Steve Martin in studio with Mark Spencer. And today we're going to look at, well, we're going to go back to the basics, right? We're going to talk about motion, first of all. Because we've been we've been doing um, I, you know and a lot of my pieces I, I have done a lot of motion in the past and I've been doing a lot of Final Cut recently because there's been so much new stuff to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, but we get a lot of requests to talk about motion. So I now why do you think that is? Why are, why are people requesting motion? There seems uh, to be a real uptick in motion interest. Because it's it, to do motion graphics uh, for fifty dollars, it's the best deal on the planet. Yeah, fifty uh, bucks. To, to, and you can it's a very powerful motion graphics tool. Right, right, and, and it's it's the also the development environment for making effects for Final Cut Pro Ten. Um, Excellent, as you know. So you're going to show us uh, keyframing. Yeah, so, so I, I thought instead of talking about how you can publish stuff to Final Cut and all that stuff, which is really important, I just go back to like if you actually want to make stuff, how do you actually make things in motion? And I thought it motion has these great things called behaviors that we've talked about a lot before. It's a right. way of creating animation without keyframes, but sometimes you just need good old fashioned elbow grease. Right. Uh, so I'm going in and just do some keyframing and, and help people. If you, if you haven't really worked with motion, you're not used to keyframes, it's just to give you an idea of, of some things that you can do. And if you've already done this, you may see a few little tricks in here you didn't know about. So excellent. here I am in motion, empty project, just going to start from scratch here, brand new empty project. And to make it a little more interesting, I have a few images I got from iStock Photo. We use iStock Photo for a lot of things here. So I got um, a background I'm going to bring in. It's a little small. I don't really care about scaling it up a little bit, so I'm going to scale it up. I'm going to hold the shift and option keys down, so I scale it up proportionally and from the center there. So I've got a, a basketball court, okay? And then I've got this basketball here. And by the way, I think I, I clicked the import button when I brought that in. You can drag clips in as well. Sometimes I like clicking a button rather than dragging if I don't have to drag the mouse. It honors the alpha channel for the... It honors, image. yeah, so we've got transparency and it automatically centers it. Actually, I actually want to start this thing. I'm going to move it up over a little bit and I'm going to scale it down. Again, I'm holding shift and option. Well, it's a pretty um, big basketball down. relative yeah, to the big. court. Yeah. It's like a medicine ball. <laughs> <laughs> so in fact, right. let's even make it a little bit smaller. Right. So I want to bounce this um, and do a variety of things with it, but we'll start just by a bounce. Um, one thing you got to think about in motion whenever you're creating animation is, do I want to use keyframes or behaviors? Because you can do either one most of the time, whether it's bouncing a ball or animating a camera or just about anything you can think of can be done one or the other way. You think people coming from like other animation programs like After Effects or what have you will probably want to kind of default, go back to the mothership, you know? With yeah, if, if you already know keyframes, that's what you're going to do. And sometimes keyframes are better. In fact, my, my general rule is if, um, if you want ongoing animation, things that don't stop, often behaviors are, are faster Good. and easier. In this case, I just want it to bounce once. Let's say this is a little promo. I want the ball to bounce up and stop and maybe reveal some text, okay? So here's what I'm going to do to make it bounce. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just, I'm going to turn on recording, which is this little button down here. It says record. You zoom in on it a little bit. Oh yeah, sure, sure, there. So there's my record button. And it's a little odd. When you turn it on, it, it kind of turns white. So it's not necessarily really obvious that it's on, but you can see it's red on the outside. So recording's on, which means any changes I make will be recorded. As a keyframe. As a keyframe, as changing that value at that moment in time only. So if I move my playhead forward in time, let's say I'm just going to move forward about uh, 11 or 10, 10 frames. It doesn't matter. I'm going to adjust it later. I'm going to move forward and I'm going to drag the ball down. And you can see right away uh, it's path. created a motion path. Yeah, it's kind of moving down. And I can adjust however I want that to go, but there's my little motion path. So that's it coming down to hit the ground, and I'll move forward a little further in time. And again, I'm going to tweak that timing later. And here's a little bit of a trick right away. If I were now to drag right on the end of this, so you can see little sort of arrows, you know, at the beginning the end of this red animation path line, if I were to drag right on the arrow, I'm actually just um, changing that path direction. I haven't added anything to it. So it's something to be a little bit careful about. It's pivoting about. off the original keyframe. Yeah, yeah. So Position. I'm, actually, I'm not making any change. To make a change, I need to drag on some other area. I could also go to the inspector and change the value, but here I'm just going to drag um, up to create a little bounce, okay? I noticed Bezier handles came out to adjust the Yeah, shape so that's of the, the first thing we're going to find out. The other thing to notice, I'm going to turn off recording, and in the timeline down here, uh, I have the, the timelines open by default now in Motion 5. I don't want to play this whole range, so I'm going to drag this little play range slider over. I just want to focus on this area. So you're I'm constraining playback. So if you're coming from After Effects, it would be akin to the workspace. What yeah, you're, 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 you're kind of your work range, your yeah. work area. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is drag this little slider at the bottom to zoom in. 
day. So we're only looking at this little section of the timeline just so we can really see what's going on. So if I play this back now, let's even make this range a little smaller. Um, we have what looks like a very natural and realistic bounce. Yeah, totally realistic. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all, right? Okay. Because what, what, one thing that motion does, it assumes when you're animating position like this that you want a nice smooth move. So it's, it's, it's easing or making the motion a, a smooth ease motion, which is not what we want here. Right, ease in and ease out of that uh, second keyframe. Yeah, and it, even from the beginning, it's kind of speeding up and then it's kind of easing through that with a nice soft, we don't want, that's not how a ball bounces, right? Nope. When, it, when it comes down, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, slow down and then kind of you know, speed up it's afterwards. It's physics. It does the opposite. Yes. So, so what we're going to do is fix that right away. Now, there's a couple ways to do that. One is, uh, we can do it directly right here in the canvas. So we, like, as you mentioned, we've got some beige handles on this curve that we can manipulate. Now, what I really want this curve to do, I want the ball to be getting faster and faster as it's dropping down, and then as it pops back up again, slowing down. Okay, so I actually want to break these handles. Right now they are, if I move one, the other moves a little seesaw. Right, yep. But if I hold the option key down, I can what's called doing breaking the handles. And I'm going to take each of these and make a little V out of them. And by doing that, what I'm doing is creating a different kind of motion. I'm actually going to take this one too and make a nice smooth curve out of it. And you can kind of do these with all these. I don't really need to do it there. So by doing that, let me zoom back out again. If I play that now, Nice. Yeah, it looks a little more like a, a real bounce, right? right? It actually looks like it's going down and bouncing and popping up. Could you, I'm just sorry, could you just have clicked on the second keyframe and then change it to a kind of a linear keyframe? or? A it wouldn't do it. In this case, I really need to manipulate those Bezier handles to get this kind of uh, look. In fact, if I go to the window, window menu and choose the keyframe editor or Command-8 to jump there, <coughs> it opens up below. I'm going to drag up to open it up higher. And let's even go bigger, make it nice and big. We can, by default, see all the animated parameters of this uh, ball, which is X, its position, y, and Z. X, Y, and Z, yeah. And here, we could have done the same thing here. If I click on the uh, position Y, which is the purple one, uh, I can, you know, even if it was a little further. And I actually prefer to work in here. I find I get more precise control, but you can do it in the viewer for kind of a quick and dirty. And uh, now I've got that nice little bounce going on. Okay, so um, that's one thing. Let's make this a little smaller again so we get a bigger canvas. And we can see we've got a little animation on there. The other thing you may notice, I'm going to come back to this in a minute, but in addition to having these keyframes down in the keyframe editor, I've got these keyframes right in the timeline. And these are going to become really handy. If you're working with motion yourself and you don't see them, at the top right of the timeline is a uh, an icon that'll show or hide those, so you can turn them those off. Those are on by default, though, aren't they? Uh, I, I don't believe so. I just have them on so often right. that you know, and Motion will save your state of your project. Um, that I always have them on because I use them frequently here. We'll come back to that in a minute. Let's do a little bit more to this ball. So it bounces and comes up. What if it were to also to rotate? Because ideally, you know, if it's really realistic. It's going to spin. So I'm going to turn recording back on, and with my playhead at the end, at the last keyframe. How do you know you're at the last keyframe? That's a great question. I'm just eyeballing it, uh -huh. um, and just does it see snap it to the last keyframe? Um, it does snap to it. You can also see that these keyframe indicators turn orange, ah, indicating like I'm parked on a keyframe. Yeah. And the other thing you can do with if the basketball is selected, uh, Shift K will move forward to the next keyframe, and Option K will move back to the last keyframe. Right, because if you're not right on, you could be one frame off, and with the recording on, you could add a, an inadvertent keyframe. Yeah, a new keyframe in there. So that's a good right. point. Um, mm -hmm. So Shift K to make sure I'm right on it. So that's a very good point. Thank you. And while I'm on it, with recording uh, enabled, make sure it's turned on there. This is interesting. See here now, it's it's actually not red around the outside <laughs> anymore. Is but it recording it's is on, on the last keyframe. I don't um, know. It's just well, weird. Well, uh, what it's it's basically what recording does. It automatically records just what you've already animated. Sure. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to rotate this ball a little, not a whole lot there. And there it turns red. I guess to indicate that this particular parameter is now animated and it wasn't before. Let's let's say that's what it's doing. And now we get something that looks a little more realistic. Now, yeah. you know, I could pick this apart a little bit because there's a shadow on there that shouldn't be rotating <laughs> with it. And exactly. you know, really, I would take an object that doesn't have a shadow on it to do this because it's not a true 3D, you know, object. It's just a flat little picture there. But right. you know, for a quick thing, it might might work fine. So let's do one more thing. If we want to make it look like it's coming toward us, uh, let's go back to that keyframe. Option K to go back, and I'm going to scale this thing up too. Recording is still turned on. Option so shift drag. Yep, and we'll make it bigger. And then if we play that through, it, you know, now maybe it looks more like it's kind of that's bouncing toward us. Yeah, it's called a bounce pass. A bounce pass. There yeah. we go. Bounce pass set up for the so shot. Right. I'm, yeah. 
And now, now that we've done that, I'm going to turn recording off. You can see that we're starting to get our um, spaghetti going on in the keyframe editor mm -hmm. because we've got all of these different keyframes happening. And sometimes it can be hard to select one when you've got all this other stuff going on. Right. So you can go through and turn off ones you don't want to see with these little checkboxes if you want. But there's also a pop-up menu here. Let me zoom in a little closer. Right now it's showing all the animated parameters, but you can choose to show um, particular ones. Like I'll just choose position, and then that's all I so see. So it gets rid of the visual clutter. It does. It lets you focus on things that you want to focus on changing. And I'll go back to animated for now, but it just allows you to see um, exactly what you want to see. So um, I'm going to bring this back down again, because I don't want to go, there's a lot to talk about here, and I just want to give a basic idea of a few things. Um, maybe I want to move this whole path. I like what I've created, but I really want it to be happening over a little bit to the left. Or maybe and right at the top of the key. Yeah, okay, the top of the key. If I want to, he's passing, he wants to be over there. Right. So here's, it's, it's a little bit dangerous. I'm not, the keyframe, the, the playhead is somewhere between keyframes, okay? okay? If I just grab this um, ball and move it over. Ooh, it gets ugly, fast. Yeah, I just, it added, even though recording isn't on, because that parameter position has already been keyframed. It assumes you want a new keyframe. It assumes though. I want a new keyframe. That's absolutely what I don't want to do. <laughs> um, what I want to do is move the whole thing. To do that, what you can do is hold down the Option and Command keys together. Let me let me zoom in this, a little bit too. This trick sounds familiar to me. Yeah, we have <laughs> talked about this particular <laughs> one. Option and Command keys together, but I thought it's a good thing, time to bring yeah. it up here. And just drag on any of those keyframes, and you can move the whole path at once. Nice. Okay, so yeah, we, we have mentioned that before, but in this context, it, it's very helpful. Good. Okay, so. Um, the last thing I want to talk about in, in this case is retiming, okay? Because this, this is great, but maybe I want the whole thing to be faster. Faster, right. Or I want the whole thing to be slower. So a couple things you can do, and again, I'm going to make this uh, keyframe editor big so we can really see what's going on. Uh, one thing is you could you know, select a bunch of these. You want to make sure all of them are selected and then try to move them a little bit, a little yeah, bit you tricky. You not get all yeah. of them. Probably better to do it back in the timeline where we saw their keyframes before. Well, there, there's another. You're, I'll get there. Sorry. I'll get there. There's there's another <laughs> thing you can do here. There's a um, there's a little box tool. I call it the box tool. It's right here. The transform keyframes tool. If you want to be particular about it. So what you do is you take that tool, you select it, and then you draw a box around all those keyframes. And then what you can do is drag on that box, and it will proportionally scale them all. That's okay. See, I forgot that that was even in Isn't there. Isn't that cool? It's very cool. Very useful, especially if you only want to scale a, a, a subset, because you can choose which ones to do. Now, I'm going to show you something that I like even better than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command-8 to close the keyframe editor. And uh, let's just make things so we can see things a little better here. And now, I'm in the timeline. These keyframes in the timeline are bundles. Okay, so for instance, this guy here, and I'll click it on the, it's showing on the group and it's showing on the layer itself. So if the layer were closed, you could still select it. It's right. a little confusing. Why are there two? It's actually very helpful if your layers, if your group is closed. But this keyframe right here represents position, scale, and rotation. All of those things you said yeah. earlier. Yeah, so I can just bundle, move that. A bundle so if of I want it, if I want it to like do it like a long time to do that first bounce, I could shift that over, and now I've got a very little boom. See, it's a whole different feel, right? by right. having taking a long time to do that. And I'm moving position, rotation, and scale all at the same time, which makes it really um, handy and easy to do. But here's even the best part in my mind. I'm going to deselect them all. Um, let's say I want to scale them proportionally, like we just did with right. that with the keyframe key tool, tool, what I call the uh -huh. box tool. Um, this is really cool. If you hold down the Option key and drag on the end, check it out. Stretches them proportionally. It stretches the proportionally, yeah. And in this case, there's only three, so it's not that big a deal. But if you've got a complex animation that you've created um, with many keyframes over time, and you just want the whole thing to be slower or the whole thing to be faster, this is the way to get there. Uh, this That's is definitely the great. fastest any way to, to get there. So um, just a few ideas on how to kind of get started uh, with doing keyframes keyframe, in motion. Keyframe animation. Yeah. Well, excellent. Now, is this going to be a to be continued, uh, we're going to come back to the basketball court. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna come back uh, and explore a few more things uh, in a future episode. Excellent. Yes. yes. So, um, thanks, Mark, for uh, showing us some you know uh, follow the bouncing ball animation. And if you want more information on how to take advantage of motion, uh, use it. Mark has an excellent training series at RippleTraining.com. You should check out. Uh, it's like 17 hours of training. It's 
pretty intense. So, but Mark, it's, it, it's little pieces. Yeah, little pieces. <laughs> no, you got to watch it all in one sitting. Yeah. You got to mainline his training <laughs> to get it all in. Anyway, thank you for watching yet another episode of Mac Break Studio. See you next time.